Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to my office. Yesterday, we had gale force winds. Last night, torrential rain. Today, thunderstorms. It's August and that's what happens at this time of year. Behind me is a silver wattle in full bloom announcing the breeding season for birds and animals within the Dandenong Ranges. Now I've been photographing, filming, studying a little carnivorous marsupial called the Agile Antichinus for six and a half years. Now I have an enormous amount of footage of their full life cycle and their behaviour. But there's two bits of footage that have eluded me for all that time. Realistically, one of them I may never ever get and that's of them actually mating. I built a nesting box last year and a female took up residence before breeding season. So I put a trail camera in and kept checking it, seeing whether I could get any uh, sign of a breeding happening in the nesting box. It never happened. So it must be away from the nesting sites. So I've been trying to use my imagination and look in areas that I wouldn't normally think of that they may be making. No results in all that time. Hollow logs in the open. I've just looked everywhere, really thinking outside the box to no avail. The other one is, which is something I could probably get I'm just gonna to have to keep going until I get it and that's of a male dying the males only live for less than 12 months when breeding season comes along a little switch goes off inside their head and they're into mating mode and nothing else matters their chemistry inside their body goes haywire testosterone levels skyrocket a few other chemicals are released into the body that start to deteriorate their muscles and every in the end they die from hemorrhaging so what I'm after is of them coming out onto the trail slowly starting to die so leaving a partner that they've just mated with not a lot of energy left body's breaking down and they're desperately trying to get to the next femur. Now I have a little bit of footage of the dusky antichinus doing that. But it's the agile that I desperately want. I'm making a documentary, I've talked about this before. And I'm starting to get somewhere with it. And that little bit of footage of the male dying just be you know, a little bit of icing on the cake just add a bit more drama to the documentary yes it's a little morbid over those past six and a half years I come home from my normal work and walk the trails in the afternoons and come out in the dark as well trying to get that bit of footage with no results at all I've taken two weeks off it's timed beautifully with breeding season so that I can focus solely on trying to get that bit of footage. First time that I've done this, walked early in the mornings, afternoons, into the dark. I'm out in the dark furthering my studies with the Agile Antichinus and I think I can hear one right behind me with no results. I have two days left to get that bit of footage, otherwise I'm going to have to wait until next year. So I thought I'd take you with me, we'll walk the trails and see if we can find anything. 
There's a thunderstorm coming, so it may interrupt me a little bit. But I'm going to take you over to a couple of spots where it's likely that we can get that bit of footage. This is a great little spot that I stop off every now and then and have a look what's going on. There's a dusky Antichinus that comes and nests in here every breeding season. Those hollows there. Filmed her a couple of times. This is the fourth year. Oh, a couple of yellow robins having a bit of a blue. It's a great place to come and sit for a while. You know, even at night, come down and listen to all the owls and stuff. And watch out for her coming there. There has been some female Agile Antichinus come in there as well. One was a good six or seven years old, named her Rosie. Very shy little girl she was. Just got to keep looking at these places, keep checking things out. Looking in hollow logs and stuff and places like this. This is a tree I call mum. She's the oldest in the reserve and the biggest. And she'd have to be at least 200 years old. And I reckon she'd have a few stories to tell. A few thousand at the least. Well, back in the 1850s, this reserve was part of the gold rush. We've been totally stripped of the undergrowth and the trees cut down. And somehow she managed to avoid all that. Beautiful tree. Dominates the landscape. You can see when you're walking down the trails. Quite hollow inside. And a little tiny entrance around the other side. Now it's possible that the Agile may come and live in here during the winter. Beautifully insulated. Be a great place to live for an Agile. And also to breed as well. A few hollows up the top. For birds and possums to go and build a nest to live in. Also up in the canopy right at the top you get carowongs and ravens will nest there every year. Oh, probably get the old kookaburra living in the hollows as well. Beautiful tree, come and visit her every now and then. I'm just wondering, have you seen any agile mating today? Or any males dying? talking to me today. Must have upset her when I said she was 200 years old. Sorry. All right, we'll keep going. Oh, yes, that was a drone that flew over before. I hired a drone pilot to come and do a dramatic flyover of the reserve for me, for my documentary. Okay. It's underway, I'm slowly getting there. working at it. And we'll also keep going, looking around the place, looking in hollow trees and in the cracks of trees for the agile breeding or along the trails for the males dying. Right, let's get going. Lots of birds out today. Beautiful.
I'm at the end of my two week vacation with no results. This is the last day, it's late in the afternoon and we've got nothing. But as they say in the classics, there's always next year. Might make it into the documentary, who knows. Anyway, <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. Two weeks off, doing nothing but concentrating on looking for those two bits of footage. But uh, yeah, we'll just keep going. Even into this week coming, it might be the odd chance there as well catch a few stragglers at the end. All right, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at my channel, so I've had 60 different videos to choose from. Talking about camera stuff, video stuff, you know, birds in flight, flash photography, camera accessories, oh, the list goes on and on. There must be something there of interest to you. So click on my icon down below. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. Oh, and by the way, I'm writing an ebook about the agile antichinus, about the females. Agile antichinus, life as a female it's called. So that'll be out, I don't know, maybe in two, three weeks time to help support my documentary, so help fund it. So watch out for that, it'll be a good read, I, I promise you. So it's about their life cycle, but I'm also writing it as part story too, to make it a bit more entertaining. Watch her bringing leaves into the into her hollow there, the nest. Too many words. It's possible that agile antichinus come and nest in here. Uh, this week, coming to the magic flyover. Who's a, that's a bugger, isn't it? See what's happening. I'm just watching the uh, eastern whip pairs flying around over there, chattering close to their breeding season. <laughs> 